Hello again, I'm Joe Barry and I work with Visuality Systems. In this video, we will continue looking at Wireshark more in detail. There are many, many ways to control the functioning of Wireshark. We will look at some of the common features and options of the product, such as filtering, selecting packets, Wireshark layout, and modifying the display column information. So let's get right to it. As you recall from the previous video, we created a Wireshark PCAP file called Demo, which showed us creating and writing to a file on a remote share. Let's open up that PCAP file by double-clicking on it. And here we see the Wireshark output of that file. Note that we have again, as you may recall, three sections. A list of the packets are here. The details of the selected packet is here. And here we see just the hexadecimal version of that same packet. Note there's a lot of wasted space on the display that we're seeing here. So let's use a different layout that is more functional. We'll go to Edit, down to Preferences. We'll select Layout, and we'll pick this layout, and hit OK. And now we can see our data in a more efficient manner. Let's maximize the screen for the rest of our demo. We are seeing now, of course, all the packets that Wireshark collected. We're interested, however, in only the SMB packets, and we want to, therefore, filter out everything else. We can enter the filtering information here in the display filter, but that becomes rather repetitive. So Wireshark has a very cool feature called a filter button. Filter buttons are defined here. These are ones that I have previously defined. But let's define a new one. We'll press on the plus button. We'll give it a name. We'll call it SMB Demo. We'll then define the actual filter here. We'll enter SMB, which of course means SMB Dialect 1, the original SMB Dialect, or SMB 2, which of course means SMB 2 and SMB 3 Dialect. We'll also add a few more cool things here. We'll add TCP flags reset so if there was a reset that took place between the server and the client, we'll see that. Also, we want to see if someone had sent a fin reset command, and that was done by entering this. This is a very good filter to use for examining uh, SMB traffic. So let's hit the OK button. And now we have SMB demo over here. Let's click on that, and now we have our filter that we want to use for examining our traffic. And we can use this filter from here on out for all PCAP files that Wireshark opens up. Let's now use Wireshark to find the packet that first referenced the file that we created, which was called My File. So we'll press Control F and we'll enter the name My File. We'll press the button Find over here on the right, and here we go. Here is the first reference to my file. Note right above here, we had a file called New Text Document, and we renamed it here from New Text Document.txt to My File.txt. By continuing to press the Find button, all other references to this same file name will be found. Now let's do a more sophisticated search. Let's now look for where we wrote our data into the file called my file. As you may or may not recall, the data was, this is some data. So let's search for that. We're going to replace the word my file, the name, with this is some data. And now we're going to hit find. And if you look down here at the bottom on the left corner, no packet contained this string in the info section. Let's go back to the top, and instead of searching inside the info area, we're going to expand our search. To, let's go to the packet bytes themselves, and now we press find, and there we go. Here we see the data. This is some data. And here is the write request. The length of data, 19 bytes. And it went to file, myfile.txt. This is the request, and here comes the response. 
that says it was successfully written. And here, immediately thereafter, we close the file. So let's say we need to analyze these packets for whatever reason. And in particular, I need to come back to this packet. There's a lot of information here, for example, that I need to continually review. So how do I jump back to a specific packet when I may have thousands and thousands of packets other than memorizing the packet ID of 328, for example? So I can press Control M to mark the packet. The marked packets are always displayed in black. I can, for example, mark some other arbitrary packet, and let's do that. I can then scroll through the marked packets by simply entering Control-Shift-N. And as you can see here, we're just jumping back and forth between them. Very nice feature, especially if you have many thousands of packets that you're looking at, and there's only one or two packets in particular that show an error or something that you need to go back to on a frequent basis. Let's go back home to our first packet. We note here that the time is a relative time from the very beginning. It's in seconds, and you can see the time as it's increasing, okay? Now, let's assume that we have a log file, and the log file is displaying time in real-time units, hours, minutes, and days. How do I compare the time values here against the time values in my log file? Well, time offers a lot of options. I right-click on time. I press edit column and we see here that the type of time is a relative time let's change it to UTC time and we hit enter and voila suddenly we have the real time the date time and hours minutes and seconds and now we can compare the packets against our log file and that's it for our discussion about the various display features of Wireshark. In our next video, we're going to continue by looking again at some of the SMB commands that are in this PCAP file. Thank you again for watching.